So my beard has always been patchy and it's mainly been in the sideburn and cheek area. And I've had a patchy beard since I was able to grow one for as long as I can remember. I would always have to shave the patchy parts on the sideburn and the cheek and have this sort of disconnected beard style because my sideburns and the cheek parts just would never grow into a full beard like I always wanted to. And I'd always see pictures of like Jake Gyllenhaal or Chris Pine with these full beards and I would just wish that my patches would grow in. So so finally one day I decided to stop ignoring it and try to fix it, but I didn't want to use minoxidil, which for those who don't know, minoxidil is Rogaine basically. So I don't have anything against people using minoxidil and I have seen it be incredibly effective on patchy beards on other men, but I've also heard horror stories, right? Of guys getting heart palpitations, blood pressure dropping too low, their heart starts spontaneously racing. And I do have a family history of heart disease and my heart already has PACs and PV sees pretty much daily. Now, I have seen a cardiologist for it and was told that they're totally benign, but I still just try to limit anything that can potentially mess with my heart. So I decided to go a natural serum route that I actually created myself based on tons of different studies I've read. And for the last 60 days, I've been doing a daily beard patch fix routine and I've started seeing new vellus hairs growing where the patches used to be. Now, to be clear, it still is patchy. Like it's not fully in yet as much as I want it to be and it's definitely not where I want to be yet but for the first time in my life I have started seeing my patches begin to fill in and that I've never seen before so this video is meant to be a quick tutorial on how I've been able to do that naturally without using any minoxidil let's get into it What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel. We cover the science of style and grooming. If you enjoy those types of topics, please hit that like and subscribe button. And also come on over to my Mannered Mains beard and hair growth community on Facebook. If you have any questions or any struggles, that's the place to ask it. So the link is in the description. Also, there's a super loyal 16% of you guys watching these videos who are subscribed to my channel and I really appreciate that. I am on a goal to hit 60K subs by the end of 2021 and 84% of people who are watching my videos are not subscribed. So even if a small portion of those guys smash that subscribe button, we would hit that goal and I'd really appreciate it. So if you find this video valuable, then definitely please hit that like and subscribe button. It's totally free and you can unsubscribe whenever you want. So the first thing I need to introduce you to is a derma roller. What is a derma roller? This is a derma roller. So it is basically a micro needle roller with hundreds, 540 to be exact, of small needles that make micro punctures in your skin and your hair follicles. So the derma roller needles can come in a wide variety of lengths, ranging from like 0.25 millimeters all the way to one and a half millimeters. However, if it's a one millimeter or higher needle length, then those are reserved for professional esthetician use and not an at-home DIY use. And these lengths are used for more than just hair growth too. Estheticians use one millimeter or higher derma rollers on people's faces who want to get rid of things like acne scars or wrinkles as it does help promote new collagen growth over time. So there are many uses for a derma roller outside of beards. They're used quite a bit in skincare. But getting back to beards, I would suggest using a 0.5 millimeter derma roller for beards. And it's a little longer. It can reach the root of your beard follicles better to promote more blood flow. And I don't think 0.25 or 0.3 millimeters are quite long enough. You also want to make sure that it has titanium needles as opposed to stainless steel. The titanium needles do stay sharper for longer and you won't need to replace it as often. So a common question I get is, can you use your beard derma roller on your scalp as well to fight balding? So your scalp hair follicles are much deeper than your beard follicles. So if you want to use a derma roller for hair loss on your head, then I'd recommend using at least a one and a half millimeter needle length and using a derma pen instead of a derma roller. A derma pen goes in vertically and it punctures. And it's much more effective than rolling because the rolling ones tend to tear the follicle as it rolls across the scalp, whereas derma pens tend to enter and exit vertically much, much cleaner. But getting back to beards, most derma rollers for beards are sold on Amazon between 0.25 and 0.5 millimeters. Again, I'd recommend getting the 0.5 millimeter one. I'll leave a link in the description for the exact one that I bought so you guys can use it. But another common question is how do derma rollers work to promote hair growth? Like what is the science behind all of this? So the theory is that the needles make tiny punctures in the skin. 
and in the follicle. And this triggers vitamin and hormone rich blood to flow to the damaged area to heal it, resulting in new collagen and keratin production in that area. And if you do this enough times over time, you can essentially wake up the dormant hair follicle and begin the telogen phase of hair growth, which can stimulate new vellus hairs where there wasn't any before. So there is actually evidence showing that this is effective on hair regrowth in men with male pattern baldness, and they're even more effective when they are paired with minoxidil on your scalp. So it does make sense to translate some of those results to beards as well, but I wasn't able to actually find any study that just focused on beards and microneedling, but I did find plenty of studies on microneedling on your scalp and it promoting hair growth. I'll leave those in the description as well if you want to fact check me. Another common question I get is, will this derma roller cause bleeding? No, it won't. It's not painful at all. It feels like slight pressure on your face, but it doesn't break the skin blood barrier. It doesn't cause any sort of pain. It all happens beneath the surface of the deeper layers of your skin. So how do you use a derma roller? So step one is you're going to want to sterilize it. You want to soak it in 70% isopropyl alcohol for 60 to 90 seconds before applying it to your face, just to make sure that the needles are clean. Step two, you're going to roll it on your face in three different sets of 10 to 20 rolls across your beard where you're seeing patches. And you're gonna do 10 to 20 horizontally, you're gonna do 10 to 20 vertically, and then you're gonna do 10 to 20 diagonal rolls. So how much pressure should you apply? I would say not much. The derma roller will do most of the work. You don't need to shove it in your face and like really get in there. You just need to sort of place it gently and roll it up, down, left, right, diagonal in all directions, 10 to 20 times each until you've really punctured that patchy area. So step three is going to be to rinse it off with warm water and then sterilize it again afterwards in that 70% isopropyl alcohol. This time I would leave it in for three to five minutes and then store it safely in a derma roller case. I have this one right here that came in the packaging on Amazon. As you can see, it's just stored nicely in this case here. Treat this like you would treat a toothbrush, right? This is yours. Don't share this with anyone. You don't wanna share a needle with someone, right? So you don't wanna share your derma roller with anyone as well. So step four is that now that you've made the tiny punctures in your beard follicles, this is when applying that growth serum is really gonna be most effective because it can penetrate deeper into the root. So most of your beard growth kits on Amazon will also come with like usually a biotin oil or like a turmeric oil or something to add on that they sell. They sell serums within their beard kits. And that's cool. You guys can use that if you want. Those may or may not stimulate beard growth. I haven't read too much studies on those. Now, this is actually, this is my minoxidil free beard growth serum that I created. And it's getting kind of low, so I do need to refill it. But essentially, this is the recipe. It's two tablespoons of cold pressed organic pumpkin seed oil. And this is going to be used as your carrier oil, right? I put this in this little container that I found from Amazon, which by the way, I'm gonna link to everything in the description so you guys can go get it for yourself. I chose pumpkin seed oil as my carrier oil because I did read a few studies about it having hair growth effectiveness in mice. And so I figured, hey, it's worth trying. And then for the next three oils, I added peppermint oil, rosemary oil, and lavender oil, right? And if you do get the therapeutic grade essential oils, it's really important that you dilute them in a carrier oil, like a fattier oil, before applying it directly to your face because the therapeutic grade essential oils can really irritate your skin at 100% potency. So I dilute them. I put about five to seven drops in about two tablespoons of pumpkin seed oil. Then I take a soft bristle toothbrush, I dip it in the oil, and I gently massage it into the area that I just microneedled. I also do this to my patches on the days that I don't microneedle as well. So I apply it once in the morning, once at night, before bed, for about 30 seconds every single day. And then on the days that I do use a derma roller, I apply it right after I derma roll the beard patches. So how often should you use your derma roller? So for the 0.5 millimeter needle, I use it three times per week. I use it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But if you've never used a derma roller before, I'd recommend starting out with a two time per week schedule once in maybe in the beginning of the week and once in the end of the week, just to see how your skin responds to it and to give those punctures a chance to heal 
heal up. I'm gonna pull up a picture right here. Here's a before and after of my beard after using a derma roller for 45 days, three times per week, and applying my growth serum one to two times per day, every single day. So as you can see, even though my patches are still visible, there is new growth that has started slowly coming in on those patches. And I'm on day 60 now. And if you kind of look at the results of where I am now, like there is new Vela's hair is growing. My sideburns are much thicker. My cheek is much thicker here. Same on this side. This side's even more so. The patches are just filling in a lot more. This is much thicker than it's ever been. My sideburn is thicker than it's ever been. It's definitely filling in. To a degree, it's never filled in before. These used to be just bare just no hair at all. So there's definitely been new hair growth and it's been really cool to see. But I am on day 60 now, right? And the results are pretty much still the same as day 45, but I am keeping the faith that more will come over time. It may take up to six months of consistent application to really see results. One mistake I do see a lot of guys making is that they give up after 20 to 30 days because they aren't seeing any results really fast, right? Stimulating new hair growth is a very slow process and it takes a lot of time. It will probably take me four to six months to really see results coming in. And I'm sure the results will probably be faster if I did start using minoxidil instead. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But again, I'm trying to stay away from the minoxidil use. And keep in mind that these results are totally anecdotal, right? These are my results in an N of one study and you may or may not get the same results, but it's definitely worth a shot if you're wanting to fill in your beard patches. So I'll link to all of the products that I use in the description. I found everything on Amazon. So you guys can just go shop on Amazon and get it. It's not expensive at all. I am happy with my progress so far and I'm very excited about continuing to do this. It's become a habit. It doesn't really feel like a chore anymore. And hair growth has always been a marathon, not a sprint. And filling in beard patches is the same thing. And you know, you might be too young also. That might be something is like as a younger guy trying to grow a beard, if you're 18 to 25 and you have a ton of beard patches, you might just need to wait. You know, I'm 30 years old right now and you know, I still have patches. So some guys need to wait till they're 35, 40 for a lot of their beard hair to start coming in much thicker. So don't lose faith guys, keep it up. And again, everything's linked in the description. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.